So this is a really cool idea. Remember that if we knew the lines were parallel, then we could say that corresponding angles were congruent. Well, we can go the other way too. This is an if and only if situation. So the converse is also true where we say, uh, if two lines and the transversal form corresponding angles that are congruent, if we're told that the angles that are corresponding are congruent, we then have proven that the lines are parallel. We can go the other way. It was, we start with the lines are parallel, we can then conclude the corresponding angles are congruent. Converse of that, if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Neat, right? Let's see how we can use this. So we've got one of these complicated uh, sets of parallel lines or potentially parallel lines. And the question says, which lines are parallel if angle one is congruent to angle two? We need to justify it. So let's mark them. Here's angle one, here's angle two. And those would be corresponding angles if we had these two lines and this transversal cutting through them. That's what would make those two intersections here, um, here, and here, right? So if that's the case, and as you can see, um, this says, oops, where is it? This says, which line is the transversal for angles one and two? Um, and you can see that that's M, right? Because that essentially what we're talking about here is the transversal and the parallel lines each make up like one of the sides of the angle. So the transversal here, um, the transversal here makes this side of this angle and this side of this angle, and then the parallel lines make this side of that angle and this side of that angle. So that's really what you're looking for when we're talking about the, the lines and the transversal. They will be the sides of the angles, okay? So which two lines would be parallel? Well, then we're talking about A and B because those are those two lines that make up the uh, one side of the angle, okay? So there you go. And that's by the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. Because remember, the, the direct corresponding angles theorem or any of those theorems start with the lines are parallel and then conclude that the angles are congruent. If we're going the other way and starting with the angles are congruent and concluding the lines are parallel, we're going to be using the converse of each one of those. So since they're corresponding angles, it's corresponding angles theorem, but the converse of it. Okay. Which lines are parallel if angle six is congruent to angle seven? So let me erase my marks and you can answer your question uh, for the same diagram based on uh, that question. Okay, good luck. Okay, these are all really straightforward, logical extensions of what we just talked about. Um, the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem says that if we, uh, well, the alternate interior angles theorem says that if the lines are parallel, we know alternate interior angles are congruent. If we're given that they're congruent, we can determine the lines are parallel. That's the converse of it. Same side interior, remember they are supplementary. If we knew the lines were parallel, then we would be able to determine that same side interior angles were supplementary. That's the same side interior angles postulate. The converse of it says, if you're told that those same side interior angles sum to 180, you know the lines are parallel. So we're proving lines parallel as is the name of this section. And of course, alternate interior angles, or sorry, alternate exterior angles, which we know would be congruent if the lines were parallel. We can then say, if you tell us that they're congruent, we can determine the lines are parallel, okay? All right, so this is gonna introduce a third way of writing a proof. We're not gonna do it though. We're not gonna use this type. We're gonna stick with the two column proof. And in fact, here's what it says. This proof below for the uh, converse of the alternate interior angles theorem looks different than the proofs you've done so far 
and it talks about the two that you've seen, the paragraph proof and the two column proof, which again, we even eliminated paragraph proof as something that we're gonna do and we're only gonna stick with two column proofs. This is showing you the flow proof, okay, which is like a flow chart, this, this and this flows to this, flows to this, but we're not gonna do that either. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take what they wrote and I'm gonna show you how it works with what we have, okay? or what we're using, which is the two column proof. They give us this, that angle four is congruent to angle six. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to cut that out and I'm gonna just put it over here. That's the statement, okay? And how do we know that? Because it was given to us. And you can see that here up top, given to us that angle four is congruent to angle six. So they're writing the statement and the reason like this below, okay? And then they write this one as well. So I'm gonna just take that statement, I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna take their reason, otherwise known as the justification, and I'm gonna put it there. Actually, let me do that one more time, better. Okay. And that then flows to say, okay, well then we can make this, based on those two statements, that's why the two of them are listed and they flow together, because you use those two statements together to then use the transitive property and make that statement that angle two is congruent to angle six. So it looks like that. And then finally, they say, therefore, L is parallel, line L is parallel to line M. How do we know that? Because if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. You see how I did that? I just took what they had is their, as their flow proof, and I just took their statement and their reason, and I put it as two column proofs. I like this as one way to do it. Um, you're gonna see it a lot this way, and so we might as well just stick with that one method. It's gonna simplify your life. Trust me, I'm doing you a favor there, okay? Yep, so they say writing a flow proof, we're gonna write it as a two column proof, but we're just gonna continue practicing two column proofs here. Given that angle one is congruent to angle seven, then let's prove that L is parallel to M, okay? These are alternate exterior angles, so that's pretty good. Uh, we can know that right away, but this is what they say. What do we know? We know that angle one is congruent to angle seven, that was given, and from the diagram, we can see that angle one and angle three are vertical angles, as are five and seven. Um, we can see that one and five are corresponding, and then three and seven are also corresponding. Because what we're doing is we're proving 3-7 that alternate exterior angles are congruent. So we can't use it, okay? Or I'm sorry, the converse of it, uh, the alternate exterior angles theorem, which is that if the alternate exterior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel, sorry. So what do we need? We need one pair of corresponding angles congruent in order to prove that the lines are parallel and therefore once the lines are parallel we know that this is true okay so what do we do we use a pair of congruent vertical angles um, and the fact that one is congruent to seven because we're told that um, so we can either say these two here and therefore we have corresponding angles or we can say these two here and now we have corresponding angles so how do they do it okay they say We've got that as a given. I'm gonna copy and paste it right there. Given, right there. And we know that angle three is congruent to angle one because they're vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent always. It's there. And through the transitive property, watch what's going on here. If angle seven is congruent to angle one and angle three is also congruent to angle one, then they must be congruent to each other through the transitive property. So put that there and give it reason. And then finally, we know that because three is congruent to seven and those are corresponding angles, then by the converse of the corresponding angles theorem, we know that if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel and we've proven that the lines are parallel. Yay. Okay. So you've got a got it problem. And here's that got it problem. So 
I put here the theorem that you're going to be uh, using 3-6, same side interior angles postulate. And just use, have it as reference because what it's asking you to do is use the same diagram from problem two, which I put up here, to prove this, okay, that if you know that the um, same side interior angles sum to 180, then the lines are parallel. So you're going to um, make your case for that. And the got a problem solution is um, one of the ways that you could get there. So if you got there in a slightly different way, but you think it's valid, then you might very well be right. Anyway, give it a try. So here's a general word problem using these same concepts. The fence gate at the right is made up of pieces of wood arranged in various directions. And suppose that angle one is congruent to angle two here and here. R lines R and S, these two posts parallel. And you're gonna, uh, you're asked to explain it. So here's the idea. Um, we need to know what the relationship between angle one and angle two is and what we know is that they are exterior angles, exterior to the parallel lines, and on opposite sides of the transversal. So we're talking about um, alternate exterior angles, okay? And we're told that they're congruent. So yes, they are because they are alternate exterior angles. And so if two lines in a transversal form congruent alternate exterior angles, you know that the lines are parallel. Remember, when you proven the lines are parallel from the uh, angles being congruent or supplementary, depending. You're talking about the converse of the particular theorem, okay? So um, how do you do on this one? Give it a shot. So I've, as you've seen a bunch of in the first couple of units, you can use algebra when you're dealing with geometry to be solving for things. Okay, in this case, what is the value of x for which a is parallel to b? And how did you get started on this is you could work backwards and say, well, what needs to be true about these angles in order for the lines to be parallel? Well, these angles are same side interior angles. And so they need to be, do you remember? supplementary, okay? By the converse of the same side interior angles postulate, the lines are parallel if the angles are supplementary. So what does that look like? Well, we know that because they're supplementary, then the, ang uh, the algebraic expressions for the angle measures when added together need to sum to 180. So you do that and then you just solve it backwards. Here you get x equals 30 um, and it says, what is the value of x? So that is the solution itself. So you're good. Um, what about this got it problem? What's the value for W for which line C is parallel to line D? I hope that's all pretty straightforward to you. The lesson check problems are here. The big thing to keep in mind, especially if you're gonna be using these ideas in proofs is to remember that when you're given parallel lines, or given that the lines are parallel, that's given information, and you're trying to prove angles either congruent or supplementary, you're just using the theorems themselves. But when you're going in reverse and saying, we're given that the angles are congruent or the angles are supplementary, depending, and you're proving the lines are parallel, that's when you use the converse. So keep that in mind. Anyway, good luck with these lesson trick problems.